You, you understand. It will start from zero. I want to beg us. When problem comes between us as couples, as family members, one of the lessons that I want to pick here, and it's for all of us to learn, let's find solution. So let's collaborate to find solution rather than pointing fingers. The Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. Amen. A God would have made a little difference. If this thing happened naturally because it was not, I mean, she was a maid. She was indeed a slave, as you can call it. So she had no choice. So her case was supposed to be a very innocent one. But pride came into her. You can see the way um, Samuel's mother's too was despised. That was what she was now doing. Thinking that it was her own, you know, at the end of the day, you saw the grace of God shared there. So that's the first lesson that is saying Sarah's handmaid. And then the second one, like I said, the topic is basically this morning, Sarah's manipulation. We have seen the first lesson looking at Sarah's handmaid. And the second one, we are going to see the name, the son named Ishmael. In verse 6, 6 actually to as uh, 6 to 11 actually you will see maybe to 17 you see God finally I mean this boy came into being because somebody was not ready to follow the will of God he came into being because somebody was just ready to I want to make my partner happy I think maybe God is delaying I think maybe God Maybe this is what God says. I will bring the nations, I will bring great nations from the children from your loins. It was not difficult for Abraham to assume, okay, this is also from my loins. But God had to remind him when he was getting frustrated and he was like, oh, is this these children from the male, the slaves that will now inherit me? And God had to say to him in the rest, it will come from between you and your wife, Sarah. So when we saw this opportunity, God coming again to reinforce his promises. And don't forget, 10 years had passed at this time. And Moses, I mean, Abraham was also saying, look, I am growing old. <laughs> Sorry. I'm growing old. Where is that promise going to be fulfilled? When will that promise come to be fulfilled? I want you to review your life. Hasn't there been moments where you think God is coming too slow? Hasn't there been moments where you misinterpret your own heart desire to mean maybe this is what God is actually saying? Hasn't it come to you a few times that the devil will use circumstances to want to lure you into a place. It could be from your career. It could be from your work. I mean, somebody who is broke, and suddenly you saw somebody's purse fell on the ground, and there is money there. And the devil will say, oh, see, God has promised to bless you. Is that the type of blessing that God does? Now, God is a miracle worker, but he's not a magician. If he wants to bless you, somebody will give you money. But when you see a pause, it cannot be an angel that drops it there. When that happens, you have a responsibility to take it quickly and go report and say, I found. And we have seen even unbelievers do some of these great things. Beloved, I want to encourage you. You don't go to school. And because the lecturer says he will give you high mark and encourages you, let me just, let's be friends. And the devil will say, oh, God will not come down to do it. What? He won't come down to help anybody. He will use somebody. And the devil suggested, maybe that teacher, that lecturer is the devil, I mean, is the angel that God is. Children, I want you to know it doesn't work that way. You are in business. You are in a career job. 
one of your bosses would like to go out with you. And it seems so innocent, the suggestion. You remember today that that's not the way God bless. When he has a promise for you, that promise will do what? It will come. You are looking for job. And I'm not going to mention. And the only opening is the ungodly place that you yourself know that this is not a godly place to work. Will you go there and think it is the will of God? Beloved, there are some work that the devil sets before you to take you away from God's presence. Will you be careful enough to know that God is preparing something better for you? So, he gave you a job. And I'm begging you, children. You can tell me, and that's the truth. Maybe when we were coming up, we didn't have that privilege. Thank God. But we've also faced a more difficult situation that you are not facing today. And the only time they want to give you is to come to work Sunday morning. It's a corny way of the devil taking you away from his presence. It's a corny way. Those money are not what will replace the fellowship that you are missing. If you are trusting God to pray, I say, God, this is what I want. Will you not be able to do it? Because the reason he wants you to be his son is to worship him. God is not taking them. He's not taking any meal. It is to worship him. If he says, this is what I want. You know, the only reason I used to tell people, Pharaoh's greatest offense is because he would not allow the people to worship him. Do you know that? Yeah. It wasn't because they are in slavery. That's no big deal. People who are in slavery that time, it was the norm that the rich people will take some people into slavery. That was not his offense. Me, the offense would be, these people, they have no time to worship God. So, and I'm praying for you, every stumbling block in your career, in your life, in all of your endeavor, that want to stand as a, stump, a pillar between you and having fellowship with God, the Lord will destroy it today in the name of Jesus. Amen. There are circumstances that come like pillars. There are circumstances that come like, oh, how will I solve this? And there is a small solution. Let me go and do it. So I want to let you know, God remains God. So in spite of circumstances, you want to see the life of Ishmael. God did not abandon Agar. You know, God did not abandon Agar. You can say, yes, it has happened. But God never abandoned him. Ah, God still allowed her to be blessed. When she was running away, God told her to go back. Did you see final obedience in the life of Agar? You know? Did you see obedience in her life? Yes. She went back. She was in today's time not a Christian, Abby. So how more of you will God appreciate when you when you are when you obey? Because he asked him to go back. And the Bible reported very clearly that Agar actually went back to her master. And everything was doing very well. So I want to plead with us. There are moments we may have made mistakes. God is still interested. He's still compassionate with us. Little wonder the generations of Ishmael are very, very rich. How do you know? You know them. It's the blessings of God. And one of the things God also said is, look, everybody, they are always fighting everybody. Everybody, fighting everybody. This is what has happened. So when you see it happen, don't think it's an unusual thing. Something has been said about them. So Abraham lived for 13 years after Ishmael's life, birth, believing God has fulfilled his promises of blessing him. We can see a conflict between the will of God and the will of man. And many times, rather than having the perfect will of God, the devil always allows us to work on the permissive will of God. God is not going to be fighting you. 
You are saying God understands. He understands. So, every time the permissive will of God is lying ahead of us, let's be conscious that we will rather go with what God's perfect will is. So, you will see God, His plan must be respected in all circumstances. So, if you look at this, how will you compare the lives of Eve and Sarah? Questions. How will you view the life of Abraham in the midst of two jealous women, women, Agar and Sarah? Why do we always think that we have better idea than God? And then I ask you, if you are Abraham, what will you do? So let me ask two men. Abraham, Shem, Ogunai, what will you do? Somebody came and said, well, why don't we do this? What will you do, sir? What would you have done? <laughs> sir, but you are thinking. You know it didn't happen to you, but let's create a situation. No child. And the wife of your youth, in caring, loving, he said, let's do this thing. I mean, it's a tradition. At that period, it was not like you have done something unusual. Everybody around will probably have been doing it. But you will remember that God had told you he was going to bless you. So what would you have done? The wife came to you. Your beloved wife. <laughs> Naturally, as a human being. Well, yeah. one, one will, one will. You will just say, yeah. okay, okay. Yeah. So, Abraham, uh, Maya, what would you have done? We're running up to pray. What would you have done? Oh, first of all, uh, like, uh, let me say, it's, it's something that, because we are human, and we, like, like you said earlier on, we will think that maybe, like, uh, when we, uh, came from. Ori <laughs> omolo <laughs> You see what he say? Say they will say, okay, this child will bring another child. Yes, now. Yes. After all, it's from the family. Praise the Lord. Abraham, Austin, Godfrey, what would you have done? In that case, it's a desire. Uh, I have an obligation to make her happy. To make your wife happy. You can see now. Praise the Lord. So the lesson is not to point fingers. The lesson is not to say, oh, Abraham did not do well. Oh, Sarah did not do well. If you are in that shoe, what would you have done? Very many places, Uzzah was doing what appears to be good when the Habanak wanted to fall. I mean? Yes. But God is saying, no, I have instruction for people to do it. As small as this Holy Communion is. And I'm saying this. When you are not appointed to do it, don't go there. Is that clear? Yes. The Lord will help us. Amen. I said God will help us. Amen. Let's bow down our heads. Do you have any other question? Any comments? Father, we thank you. We bless you this beautiful morning. It's a privilege to be in your presence and you have been so wonderfully precious, faithful, loving, caring with us. We appreciate this. Father, we return the blessings to you. And I pray this morning for your children in any way the devil has been trying to manipulate their life. To walk against your will in their life. This morning we stand against such moves in the name of Jesus. Help us as individuals, families, as a church. To work in your perfect will, Lord. And in circumstances sometimes that may be greater than us. Lord, let your grace call us back. I will not sin against you. Thank you, precious God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. When upon the large billows you are tempted to us, when you are discouraged, thinking all is lost, 
Count your many blessings, name them one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one, count your blessings, say what the Lord has done. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Are you ever burdened with a lot of care? Does the cross seem heavy? You are called to bear. Count your many blessings, every doubt will fly, and you will keep singing as the days go by. Shall we rise up on our feet as we take the congregational song? Uh, please, um, you can uh, browse through your phone and let's see this. Grace, God's grace. 
Grace that will pardon and cleanse for thee. Grace, grace, God's grace. Grace that is greater than all our sins.
big or shameful of it? Has it not been wondrous to you? Has it not done your life well? I want you to be to exalt the name of the Lord. Have you any in the first Sunday in the month of February? Oh, the second month in the expedition in the month of February. It has been the Lord. I want you to be to Father, Lord, we are talking just about Abraham 
And some of us have condemned his behavior. But if you are in the shoe, what will you do? And the brother answered a question. He said, the grace of God. And when I decided that Paul also was facing situation, God, Jesus told us, my grace is sufficient for you. Brethren, we are talking about abundance. I want to pray, Father, you know my journey this month, this year, Lord, I also go for your divine ability upon my life. That you make all grace abound towards me. Oh, that you make all grace abound towards my home. In the name of Jesus. Yes, Father. I want to encourage all our teenagers, all our youth, all our children to please stand up. Just three minutes now and we are done with this prayer. There is nothing a man can get except it comes from God. Which is, he said, if witches were horses, beggars be right. You can wish to become a prime minister. It is a good wish. But if the ability of God is not there, you may not be able to abound towards all things. So I want to pray, Father, offer my life and divorce. Lord, I receive grace. Oh, let your grace be abundant, be abound towards me. In the name of Jesus. Children, I want you to pray, Father, I receive your grace, oh God. Oh, to be sufficient for my life. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The Bible says when we don't know how to pray, the Holy Spirit intercedes for us. So this morning, children, the Holy Spirit wants to help you to pray. I want you to lift up your right hands unto the heavens. Yes, we don't know how to pray, but you say this. Lord, I receive grace towards all my life and give us. Yes, thank you, ma'am. Yes, children, open your, uh, lift up your hand to the heaven and say, Lord, I receive grace. Oh, towards all my life and give us. I know nothing comes from any man. Only comes from God. Yes, I need to pray us. I receive grace, oh God, towards all my life and give us. Grace to serve you. Grace to serve you. Grace not to be, be shocked with all life demands. Grace not to be shocked with all temptations of life. Lord, I receive grace. I receive grace in the name of Jesus. He says, always have no sufficiency in all things. Father, I receive grace for all sufficiency towards my academics. Oh, towards my academics. Towards your children's academics. I receive grace. I receive grace, sufficient grace. Even to live in this land without compromising. Oh, I receive grace for my children to live in this land without pointing out to the idol of this land. I receive grace. Oh, for good health. I receive grace for success. I receive grace to triumph in the name of Jesus. Oh, brother, this is the word of God. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you. Father, I receive this grace. As a woman, I receive the grace to remain a virtuous wife to your home, to remain a, a, a virtuous mother to your children. Oh, children, I receive grace not to disappoint God, even as I am growing in. Oh, I receive grace to walk with the Lord. I receive grace to walk with God in the face of every peer pressure. I receive grace to serve the Lord. May put in first grade gospel church. Receive grace in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. And so our Father and our God. Oh yes, Father. Upon your word we stand this morning, Jehovah. Oh, it is your word that is spoken unto our life. Oh, and God is able to make our grace abound towards you. I pray for all of us, oh God, that in the name of Jesus, whatsoever the situation that you are, no matter the circumstances that you are, no matter the location that you are, may the grace of God abound towards you. In the name of Jesus, that ye always have enough sufficiency in all things. In all things, may you have sufficiency. Amen. Sufficiency of God. Sufficiency of God's goodness. Yeah. Sufficiency of great health. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. And it says, May I burn unto every good work. Yeah. I pray for you and I. The grace to always do good work. Yeah. Oh, that our work will not die. Yeah. Oh, that our work will not be burnt yeah. and destroyed yeah. by fire. Yeah. Oh, the grace to upon the good work. Yeah. May the Lord deposit upon every one of us. Yeah. In the name 
Jesus' name we pray. to be in his presence yes. this morning. I'm happy to be in his presence. Uh, it's time for offering. It's time for tithe and offering. Let's begin to package our offering uh, and our tithe. It, uh, if you want to pay your tithe, we have uh, some papers uh, pasted by the wall. You can pay through by cash. You can pay by interact. Uh, the account number for the church is there uh, in that uh, uh, paper pasted by the wall. So uh, let's do that quickly. Let's do that quickly. Let's do that quickly. I will need the uh, Sister Sarah to come forward to go and. Hallelujah! Uh, yes. Amen.
Father, we thank you, we bless your name. Yes. We cannot thank you enough. Yes, Lord. You are the agent of this. The one that created man, heaven and heart. Yes. We worship you. Amen. We thank you, Father, for all these offerings that we have brought before you this morning. Even for those that are willing to give and they cannot give. For one is the only one that we worship you. Thank you, Jesus. See, in all every situation of life, we continue to thank you. Yes, Lord. Daddy, we thank you. Hallelujah. We bless you. Hallelujah. We leave this offering as a sweet smelling sour before you this morning. Amen. We pray, O God, that you sanctify it only in Jesus. Amen. Every hand that has blessed you with this token of God. We pray, O God, that you bless those hands in hundredfold in Jesus' name. Amen. You will not know any sorrow. Amen. You will not know any sadness. Amen. Your life will continue to walk forward. Amen. Move forward in Jesus' name. Amen. Every stagnancy in your in life, in your career, Amen. in your academics, Amen. we pray, O God, that today, God has put end to it in Jesus. Amen. As you continue to work with God and you continue to use your, your talent, your resources to, to, to bless the Lord, the Lord God Almighty will continue to move your wife, life forward in Jesus. Amen. Every obstacle in your life is removed today in Jesus. Amen. For as many that has brought their tithes, Father, we pray, O oh God, that the 90% that is left will not be used in the hospital. Amen. Amen. We will not to, 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 uh, on, on uh, uh, legal, legal battle in the mighty name of Jesus. For many that are looking forward to change their job, they are seeking to have a choice job. Yes, Father, we pray, O oh God, that God Almighty will open doors for you in Jesus. Amen. You are here on this land, and this land, O oh God, we, 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 we bring goodness upon your life in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we thank you, we bless your name. Hallelujah. We will take this land as heritage in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we bless your name. We bless your name. As we continue this service, Father, we pray, O oh God, that you will be with us. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, everlasting King of Glory. For we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's put our hands together for the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord is good to us. Praise you, the Lord. I want to welcome every one of us to the service of today. Please, I want you to turn to your left and your right and say you are welcome to the presence of the Lord in Jesus' name. Yes, I love those smiling faces. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Tell the next person beside you the Lord is good to you. Yes. And the Lord is calling you for an assignment that next week you want to see a newcomer here. Who is going to answer to that calling? It's a blessing for that person. And the blessing will be ours in Jesus' name. Amen. This is First by Gospel Church, where we we preach the fourfold uh, gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, that Jesus Christ our Savior, our healer, our baptizer with the Holy Spirit, and the soon coming King. And we are enjoying every one of you, especially those of you that have been joining us online. We really want to see you physically. Please come and be with us, but the Lord has written good concerning us. And you will not regret coming to our meeting in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The days of our meeting remain the same. Just as we are meeting now, we have our Sunday worship service by 10 a.m. every Sunday at this same venue. Uh, please come with us. And then on Wednesdays, we have our prayer meetings through our Bible study. It has been a wonderful time. Uh, those of you that have been attending, you can testify to that. It's been a terrific, uh, wonderful time in the presence of the Lord. We are enjoying you. Please join us virtually on Wednesdays. It starts by 7 p.m. It is time we look into the scripture, precept upon precept, lines upon line. 
and the God has been doing us wonder. And I pray as you join us, God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. The last Friday of the month is what the time for our vigil. We come together to tarry in the presence of the Lord. For those of you that were not able to make it last one, I don't want to say you, you missed something. You didn't miss because we actually interceded on your behalf. Praise the Lord. But I'm challenging you. The next one is coming. Are you preparing your prayer request? Are you coming wonderfully to the presence of the Lord to tap into the blessing of what God is doing with us as we work with Him this year? We declare the month as a month of working with the Lord in abundance. And I pray the abundance of the Lord will be upon each and every one of you in Jesus' name. He said, I will supply all your need according to my riches in glory by Christ Jesus. And that will be our testimony in Jesus' name. Amen. Shortly, our pastor will be coming with a message from above. I want you to prepare your mind. The choir will give a simple, a special number. And hereafter, the minister of God will come and uh, bless us. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. If you know that song, please sing along with us. Holy, holy.
Aleluya. Whatever you can put down, church, let's take it. Deuteronomy chapter 8, I want everybody to open. Deuteronomy chapter 8, we'll read a few verses to introduce the theme for this month and then to we'll encourage us in our individual devotions at home. Deuteronomy chapter 8. And I'm going to read from verses 1 through 20. And I want you to read the next verse when I read the first one. Are we there? Deuteronomy chapter 8. Be careful to follow every command that I have given you today, so that you may live and increase, and may enter and possess the land that the Lord promised on old to your forefathers. And thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord thy God led thee these forty years in the wilderness, to humble thee and to prove thee, to know what this is thy heart, whether thou dost keep his commandment or so. He humbled you, causing you to hunger and then feeding you with manna, which neither you nor your fathers had known. To teach you that man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. The remnant was not old upon thee, neither did thy foot swell these forty years. Thou shalt also hope. Know then in your heart that as a man disciplines his son, so the Lord your God disciplines you. Therefore thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God to walk in his ways and to fear him. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land with streams and pools of water, with springs flowing in the valleys and hills. Amen. A land where bread will not be scarce. Amen. And you will lack nothing. Amen. A land where the rocks are iron. Amen. And you can dig copper out of the hill. Amen. Be careful that you do not forget the Lord your God, failing to observe his commands. His laws and his decrees that I have given you this day. And when your herds and flocks grow large, and your silver and gold increase, and all you have is multiplied. And your heart is lifted up, and thou forget the Lord thy God, which will bring thee forth out of the land of Egypt, from the houses of bondage. He led you through the vast and dreadful deserts, that thirsty and waterless land, with its venomous scape snakes and scorpions. He brought you water out of hard rock. You may say to yourself, My power and the strength of my hands have produced this well for me. Verse 19. If you ever forget the Lord your God and follow other gods and worship and bow down to them, I testify against you today. That you will surely be destroyed. Huh. As the nation will be the Lord destroyed before your face. face. So, so shall you pray that because you will be dead, 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 be
You are not single, you can sit down. You are not single, you can sit down. Every other person is here. And I want you to please take your Bible. Everybody, you are not. And I'm going somewhere. I want the echo of Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18, from the wonderful people that are standing ahead of me. Take your Bible. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18. They are going to reach. Deuteronomy 8, 18. Oh, yeah. Can we go? One, two, go. You have listened, you have heard, children. The reason I have brought you to this is that you are in a land flowing with milk and honey already. Hallelujah. <laughs> Some of you, you did not go through the journey of the wilderness that your parents went through. Some of you, you never had a moment you are looking for water and there was no water. Please be seated. Some of you, you have never had the moment of no food. Every time there were, you are enjoying buffet in the house. It is not unlikely that you suddenly forget and say, oh, this is how it has always been. No. Love, it was tough for you to get to this land. You may not know it. It has taken so many sacrifices for you to get into this promised land in Moses. It has get, taken so many, I will tell you, some people, many vigils of prayer. What you never pray for, your parents have prayed for it. And that's the reason I want you to understand. You are not smart to have gotten to where you are. I want you to understand that it can never be because you are intelligent than your peers. I want you to know that it cannot be because, I mean, you have a great spirit. I want you to know that it is because God has shown you mercy. And I don't want you to miss it. I was sharing with my children one, I mean, this last one. I said, look, if anything happened to you positively, believe that it has been deposit of prayers that are working for you. I say, if it looks so rosy, believe it, it has been deposit of prayers that are working for you. Nobody should come and think he's smarter than the person besides him or her. It is God. So, I want to welcome you to this month. We want to walk with God in his abundance. Can I hear that? Walking with God in his what? There is no word somewhere else. People can talk about stories of, they call it crypto. Everything that has no, that you cannot understand. I tell people, God never performs magic. Is what? It's a miracle worker. When this look like magic, it can't be from God. And I want to plead with us. God, what did Psalm 50 verse 10 says? This man holds eh, cattle on a thousand hills. Do you know what it used to be? Cattle used to ranch on, cats on uh, hills. So, when you can imagine thousands of hills, how many cattles can be there? He holds it. He's your father. He's your all in all. 
How can you be poor? I was not talking of just material today. I want to invite Mama to come and pray. I want to invite Mama to come and pray. Don't worry, it's, it's planned, really. So don't think, ah, why? Come and pray over the message. I will pray. If somebody is serving God up to this age, that's the message. If somebody is serving God, is she looking for Lamborghini to buy? <laughs> no, what do you think she's looking for? Who can just say why she's doing what she's doing? Why, why? Children. Children. Thank you. <laughs> so the people that have asked to read, let me tell you. We want to grow like her. Amen. Older than her. Amen. And the stress can only be because of you guys. Amen. By the grace of God, the food that we will eat as couples, God has provided it. Yes. Lord will help us. Amen. Yesu <laughs> Lord. Do you see the meaning of that prayer? God has heard. The miracle worker, he speaks in all tongues. I want to ask the Bora to read from Second Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that he always having all sufficiency in all things may abound in every good work. If you can't go quickly, write it down. Sister Aladiti is going to read First Timothy chapter 6, verses 17 to 19. Brother Akiti read Psalm one Psalm twenty three verses one to three. Psalm twenty three verses one to three. of this service and I'm praying as many as are part of us in diaspora online the Lord is leading somebody to say oh how I wish I'm part of this fellowship because you desire it Amen. the Lord will bring it to pass Amen. in the name of Jesus Amen. this morning I'm sharing this. It's not part of the. It's not just for the message, but it's a, it's a part of what will we will be sharing. My pastor went to be with the Lord two days ago, and I tell you something about him. This man came into our life 27 years ago, before my wedding. So you know that 
It was before the family was started up. I can't worry whether the age they are reporting is the true age. I don't know. You know all these old people, they may not have bad. Because they said it's 79. And I know 27 years ago, it means that it was just be 50 something, but it was Baba Baba as at that time. Will somebody be calling me Baba Baba now? Baba, <laughs> it depends. If you have not seen it before, this is the man that introduced me, and I am telling you, I have done it. If listeners came to us today, it's not because we don't know how to do it. For 40 days every year, we fast. We have vigil. 40 days every year. Every last Sunday, the Sunday before Christmas, every year, the Sunday before Christmas, we start a 40-day vigil. And I'm not talking of vigil of one hour. Until 31st, nobody eats. It looks punitive. But I can tell you we are drawing from that deposit today. 40 days. It's only on the 31st that we normally do Thanksgiving in the church and everybody is doing 40 days. This is an old man that we are talking about. He leaves the farthest place to the church, but he was always in the prayer tower before him, before everybody. And I'm saying, what can I learn from him? His life touched me. If somebody did so much work and not stop there, we went to plant church in Toronto. Two churches in Joss. So many churches that this God lit. Look, when we wanted to plant the first church, everybody was like, this man is crazy, but he has planted. You know what? The best of the church was what he gave out. You know, they divided the church and said, okay, if you stay on this side, you are going to the new church. And so many people like, ah. He said, let them go. Three districts have come out of all these adventures. And I said, look, I want to leave a legacy. The Lord will help us. These children... More of the message this morning is to encourage you. What's his name, sir? Reverend Emmanuel Adebi. He was the national treasurer with Baba Farumbi. So he retired together. Praise the Lord. Some of you, you would have been receiving email. You will receive email today from Right Now Media. I've made a substitution. They will send email to you from today. So please go there. Especially those ones that I have the email. If you do not receive, you want to be, please, it's a gold mine of teachings. Deborah, I struggle to get your number. You know I said to you, there's something so much that the children can enjoy there. When you go into it and you need any equipment for us to make you happy, the church will invest in it by the grace of God. So I'm sharing this because we have to grow. Working with him is not just holding our hand like this. It's understanding him. It's living with him. It's let's understand the mind of Christ. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So this morning, everywhere we talk about, oh, and I say, the subject matter of abundance has been a subject of much criticism, even within the Christian fold. Due largely to misunderstanding of the subject matter of prosperity and abundance. It is indeed not unusual for ministers of God to be so tired prosperity teachers prosperity minister in more derogatory way. Yes, I concede we must not have prosperity and material abundance as the main focus of our gospel teaching. Even when the hands is of the Lord and all the fullness therein, 
That must not be the focus. But the true children of God must approach prosperity and abundance in a biblical way. We must focus on it. What does the Bible say about prosperity? So we will not, for what anybody will say, limit our God. We will not, for whatever anybody think, decide to want to live in abject poverty of mind, of spirit, and indeed of material things of life that you can enjoy. But I will let you know that nothing profits you if you gain all of those material and you lose your soul. So we will not limit in, we will not limit our understanding of finance to our bank accounts. We will not limit our understanding of abundance to our bank accounts. It remains one of the most insulting things to teach that Protestants, Pentecostalism, is all about money, money, money. We have a God who is rich. We have a God like the text we have said. He owns everything. So we have a right also to say that we will not live in poverty of mind. In poverty of our spiritual growth and in poverty of the material things all around us. After all, all of our great fathers of faith, Bible did not tell me they were poor. If somebody have thousands cows, if they have cows in thousands, how do you define that person as a poor person? So if you are and here to that lineage, then you have a right to it. But today I want to share very, very briefly, because in the following weeks we'll be talking, the nature of the abundance that we are talking. The nature of our believer's work in his abundance. The nature of it. What are we expecting? The first one is about, look, beloved, your spiritual blessings. The fact that you have given your life to Christ. The fact that you have a fellowship with Christ, the fact that you can relate with Him, this is far more than rubbish. It's far more than gold. It's far more than those things we are talking about. One with God is the majority. I mean, He says, What shall it profit you? If you gain the whole world and lose, mathematically, when they do the, I mean, so if X plus so, 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 so is T, eh? X plus Y plus whatever is G, that is the great God. Why will you be looking for the small element of those words? I will not just punch on this one, the person who holds this. It is the same thing that you put a land, a building on the land, and the land is owned by somebody. Who owns those things? Who owns the property? It is the landowner. So if you are a son of the person who owns all of those things, why will you not be part of him spiritually? So the first thing that I want you to see about the perspective that you need to gain in Christianity about abundance is that you have the grace of salvation. Nothing more than good. I mean, nothing can be better than that. You have the spiritual gifts, the calling, the anointing that you cannot go and use money to buy. You have opportunity for God to meet all of your spiritual needs. And the greatest blessing, riches that anybody can have is what? Salvation. If the rich man would now remember Lazarus, who seemingly have no material riches, and he still remember that this is somebody who can help you, will you be willing to give your life to Christ? If you want blessings, you want to work with Him, the first thing is your life. Number two that I want you to know is that God is our shepherd. He's our shepherd. When David was writing this, he understood very well because he lived with them. He was part of his experience as a shepherd. He knows 
that the shepherd will not allow the flock to be in need. He will not allow the flock to be hungry. When they need water, the shepherd will go all out. When lions wants to kill one of them, the shepherd is ready to spare his life. So you have that God. Why will you be in trouble? I would say, the Lord is my shepherd. What? I shall not what? So if you have somebody who is close around you, why will you be in trouble? Praise the Lord. So a successful shepherd need the unquestionable obedience from you. You know the way the sheep, they say like they are full of it. You have to be a Christian fool. When the shepherd wants to cross them, you know they don't just cross it. It's only when he gives them instruction, the and they don't come back. They are not goats; they are sheep. <laughs> Beloved, you can't be a goat and enjoy the blessings of God. You have to be that full sheep. That they say, "Go here." It doesn't look back and say, "I mean." If a shepherd, even when the train is moving. If the shepherd is careless and he just killed them, do you know the sheep will kill behind them? Praise the Lord. Number three, I want your riches to be the abundance of your service. The abundance of what you are giving to God. You have talents. You have great skills. You have an idea of what can make the ministry grow. How are you doing it? Are you doing that service for profit? It doesn't happen in our church. What happens is on churches. That even the man who wants to get the accommodation for the church is going to make profit from it. Do you see what I'm saying? Your service to God, you must give it in abundance. The treasury the time, your talent, you must give it what? In abundance. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Number four is the prosperity in our giving. It must also be in abundance. Luke chapter 6 verse 38. Luke chapter 6. I want you to see the demonstration of it. Some of us who lived in the village, you know these children will not know what we are talking about. You, they will not know what we are talking about going to the market to go and buy the bowls of those foods. Gary? Gary, yes. The way they do it. Somebody will put his own hand inside the bucket to. You understand? Do you read it? Luke chapter 6, 38. Give and it shall be given unto you. Benny, that's what God is asking. Yes? Good measure. Mm -hmm. Pressed down, mm -hmm. shaking together, yes. and running over. Yes. Shall, mel shall men give unto you, unto your bosom? For with this same measure that you met. Beloved, this is what you. God is asking of you in the richness of his abundance. Don't think that you want to be doing this thing for God. No, 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 no. Do what you think is a generous one in your service. Number five, we have read it. Let it be clear to everybody, Deuteronomy chapter 8, that that word of yours is from God's grace. He is the one who gives you power to make you money. Is it not that because you are in good health that you can jump around? Which word is beyond somebody who can wake up and sleep? Eh? You like the good food of life. There are some people they will feed them. They cannot eat as an adult. Some people cannot poo poo. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So God has that power to make you rich. And His blessings and wealth make you rich without adding sorrow to it. So I don't want you to be the unfaithful believers. I don't want you to be unfaithful one that God has blessed. Who suddenly now come and think, oh, it's my grace. Like that unfaithful woman in Hosea chapter 2 verse 8. Oh, it is because I am wise. Number six, I want you to know 
that prosperity must be with contentment. It must be with contentment. One of the beautiful verses I like in the Bible, 1 Timothy chapter 6, from verses 6 to 10. What did you say? So when you are just money, 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 you are, you are destroying the relationship God wants you to have. How much will you be satisfied with? If I ask somebody, how much do you need, Brother Kitty? How much money do you need? <laughs> how much money do you need, Sister Ladity? How much? This man now oil money. Is this oil money? Don't worry. Oil money. <laughs> how much? But just when it, just a little, just a few million, then. Eh? Two million dollars. Ah, you see, you need so more than that. Where did I come? Your your husband is saying, "I'm very open for those songs." I'm very open. That has not bought a jet for you to maintain. Did you see that? More than that, so. God asked more than that. What is two million? Two million. Okay. Our boy is moving to party. Praise the Lord. So you just need to be contented. There is no limit. But whatever you have, with thanksgiving, receive it from God. Hallelujah. Finally, Hallelujah. our moment of blessings, riches, must be that which we know that all thanksgiving, gratitude belongs to. Hallelujah. So when you get it, let it be clear. And let your attention shift to gratitude when it comes. And this is where I want to beg all of us. Can you say it with me? I will not complain with my mouth again. I will not complain with my mouth again. Oh, about the state that I am, I will not complain about it. But no. I see somebody is somebody is laughing. Snow. 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 We have to thank God in all what situation. The reason many of us have issues with God is even the one that we are we are still complaining you don't have enough shoes some people don't have legs to wear the shoe yes sir I mean oh you know the woman hats he has not bought all the colors some people's head is torn they don't even know the color do you understand what I'm saying are you going to appreciate God so our true relationship with the owner of health and the fullness thereof entitles us to live in his abundance. But such words are available only for true sons and daughters of the Most High God. Are you a child of God? All of what we are talking about, you are not entitled to it. If you are not, if you are not giving your life to Christ, God has not given you this for selfish purpose. I want you to close your heart. Is that something the Lord is telling you you have not done right? God has blessed you. I feel appreciated him enough. God has done so well for you. Do you think that you are better than the other people who don't have that privilege? Are you contented at any point in time or you are just a grumbler every time? I want you to ask God to help you. I want you to say, God, help me. I want to be rich. But I want to be rich according to your desire. Help me, Lord. 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 In the name of Jesus. There is no wealth where God is not there. There is no wealth, beloved. There is no wealth. It's poverty. Some people are carrying dead it is. Things that will rot in what they have there. I want you to please try. Sometimes the devil makes that tight that you want to give to look too big. Beloved, if you will but be paying for hair that you use every day, you know what it means. If you have to pay to sleep, you know what it means. Those talents 
The ideas that can grow that you say, what was it to come in bear? I mean, this one not be my own. Are you going to trust God today? Are you going to trust him to have his way in your life, in your finances? That which you plant is what you will reap. If you are generous, God himself will be generous to you. I want you to pray, God help me. Help me. Our Father, we thank you. We bless your name this good morning. The privilege to be under your teaching, under your leading. And I pray that which you have spoken to us in brief words. Let it germinate in our lives in the name of Jesus. Amen. Everywhere we need your ideas to grow wealth. Baba, help us that we will hearken unto your directive. Amen. The strategies that we will use to live in peace and in abundance. Lord, you will grant unto us, Lord. Amen. Your name alone shall be glorified. Amen. Thank you, precious God. Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Council member, Pastor Ray, please come. Let's go to the communion. I think the song we are singing for communion is the marvelous.
It's not another sermon, but we just want us to look at the word of God as we come to this table. Uh, Luke chapter 22, verse 19, uh, 1 Corinthians 11, verse 24. Luke 22, 19. And he took bread and gave thanks. You can have your seat, please. And he took bread and gave thanks and break it and gave them unto them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you, these do in remembrance of me. I written on 1 Corinthians 11, verse 24. And when he had given thanks, he break it and said, Take it, this is my body, which is broken for you, these do in remembrance of me. Quickly, what are we to remember? What are we to remember? Let us remember that once upon a time we are sinners, saved by grace. So let's continue to glorify God for this privilege. What are we to remember? Let us remember the elements, the bread and the wine we are taking this morning symbolizes Jesus' body that was shed for you and I, for our redemption, brethren. Let us remember this and continue to cling on to the work of salvation that God has wrought in our life. What are we to remember? Let us remember that our, our salvation is not purchased by silver or gold, but by the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. What are we to remember? Let us remember that while we are here on earth, we are waiting for a promise. A promise of his coming. He said, I will no longer eat with you until I meet you at the feet of my father. Many of these and many more are what we need to remember, brethren. And this is why as Christians, we share the body of the Lord. Why do we remember? We remember these things so that we don't allow the affairs of life to shock us. Like we have heard in the sermon, we don't allow the pleasure of life to be so enjoyable to take us away from God. What do we need to remember? Let us remember, brethren, children of God, that we have a relationship with God. So do not allow anything whatsoever to come between you and God. Why do we need to remember? Let us remember that it's need for us on a daily basis, moment by moment basis, to always draw near unto God, to always draw deeper unto God. In a few seconds, I want you to bow down your head and say, Father, I remember your death, I give you thanks. I remember your death, Lord, draw me closer to you. May, my, may I not trample on the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. His body, it was broken, and his blood was shed to make me a child. His body, And it's not very, very difficult to ask God 
to help you this morning. It's not difficult to ask God to save you from the destruction that awaits sinners. It's not difficult to say, call God, come into my life. It's very simple. Beloved, are you praying? You don't need to take this element as unbelievers. Because that will bring more trouble to your life. But the window is open for you as you are there silently confessing your sins, asking God to be at peace with you. That thief on the cross, it was a matter of few seconds, perhaps minutes, and he made amends with God. You want to make amends with God this morning? I want you to take advantage of this moment. God help us, Lord. Help us, help us, help us, help us. Help us, Lord. And Lord, this will not stand against me. We will not stand against the leadership. We will not stand against the church on the day of judgment. That we will not bring condemnation unto ourselves, Lord. Thank you, precious God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. I ask Pastor Godfrey to pray over the bread. And Sister Chineno to pray over the wine. Father, we thank you because of your body broken for us. Thank you because of the pain, the pain you experienced on the cross of Calvary. And then we call unto the Father, feeling about her name. So, Lord, why have thou forsaken me? For you were forsaken that we might not be forsaken. The Bible said, though he was rich, he came to the hill to become poor, that we might be rich. We thank you because, Lord, you shed blood in abundance. Your flesh was bruised. We thank you because of this price paid, the finality of all rituals. Today, the people of the world, they copy, they take human beings to make rituals for power and prosperity. But we have the original, the body without blemish, was sacrificed on the altar for our abundance. And we say, thank you, Jesus. We say, thank you, Jesus. Daddy, we have come, Lord. We come seriously. And we say, we are not satisfied with where we are. We feel, Lord, we have not exploited to the fullest the price you paid. It's like someone that is taken to a buffet in a in a, in a, in a, in a, in a five-star hotel and just take peanuts and eat and say it's okay. Now, Lord, we have come that we want to work with you in the abundance of your grace. In that work you have completed on the cross of Calvary, you said it is finished. Poverty is gone. Sickness is gone. Complain is gone. Amen. Daddy, we are taking this flesh now. We're not taking it as normal thing. Lord, do the unusual in our lives. Amen. Daddy, we are taking your flesh to gain strength to work with you. Amen. We are taking your flesh, oh God, to actualize the abundance of the price that was sacrificed, that the price that was saved, that was paid on the cross of Calvary, and let it become a manifestation in the life of the children, Amen. in the life of the youth, Amen. in the life of the young adults, Amen. in the life of the adults, Amen. in the lives of the senior, Amen. in the life of every member of this church, Amen. physically present and virtually present, and not able to come in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Is there anyone sick in the house? By the reason of the anointing, the yoke has broken. Amen. All sickness is gone in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you for this provision, Lord. Lord. We take it with thanksgiving, Lord. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our Father, we thank you for today. Thank you for the opportunity you've given us to partake at your table. Father, we say be thou exalted, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen.
Father Lord, we commit the blood we take this morning in communion. Father Lord, we pray, Lord, as we come before you, may this blood not stand against us on the last day in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we pray and we ask of you that as we partake of this communion today, as we take the blood in, Father, may we also partake of the marriage supper of the Lamb in heaven, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. My God and my Father, I pray and I ask of you, as we take this blood into our systems, whatever is there that is not of you, Father, I pray you flush it out, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, help us, Lord God, as we take this communion, that in our walk with you, in this year, 2022 and beyond, help us, call us into a deeper walk with you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, help us, Lord, that, Lord, we cannot do it on our own, we can only try, but that your grace will be sufficient for us, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we pray, Lord, that as we depart from here, for those that are not with us here, that are joining us virtually, they are not able to take the blood, Father Lord, or the, um, your body physically, Father, let the blessings of this service also be with them, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Father, for the answered prayer. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please share the elements. Unto his feet, 
In the name of Jesus. Amen. And the next month, as we move on in your abundance, this coming Sunday, you will be a part of this worship. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. You are the great doctor, and will speak life and peace, comfort into his life. Amen. And everyone that is sick that is hearing us, receive healing from the Most High God now. Amen. Thank you, precious God. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And as we take the bread, I mean the wine, which represents the blood of the Lamb, and I pray that this blood will work for you. Amen. If there be any illness that is ready to come, this one will send it away. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Once again, we sanctify all of these elements in the name of God the Father. Amen. And of the Son. Amen. And of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen.